Hi, Nicole Hetty here from Paper Training, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to create your own custom backgrounds with multiple stamps. The first thing I'm going to do is just start by building the actual background. Um, I'm starting with a piece of vintage cream cardstock, and it measures three and three quarters by five inches. And I like to go ahead and just cut the size cardstock I need for my card when building backgrounds like this. That way you have less space to fill up, uh, you know exactly how to proportion everything, and I just have better luck working with that smaller size. Now, when building your own background, it's best to start with the largest image that you want to incorporate into your pattern. So I'm starting with this large leaf from Harvest Berries, the largest solid leaf. And I'm just going to start in the upper corner here. Um, when using things like leaves, I like to make sure that the majority of them have the stems leading off of the block. Now I'm going to continue building the pattern and adding a few more of the largest leaves. I'm going to add one. I'm just going to try to create some balance. I'm going to add one over here. So, and I'm going to add one more over here, like that. And now I'm going to go back in with the largest flower from Flower Fusion number 7 and I've got terracotta tile ink and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to disperse this largest flower around creating balance at, at the same time you know filling in some blanks so I'm going to put one there here, put a little tiny piece of one there for balance, put some there, Could put one right about here, and as you can see I've got, a, I could use one or another one right about here, and as you can see, you know, I've got it kind of balanced out around the project. Now I'm going to go back in with ripe avocado again and I'm going to use the smaller solid leaf from Harvest Berries and I'm just going to kind of weave these in around the large flowers that I just did to make them look framed by the leaves. fill it here, there, and everywhere. I don't want to put too many because I do have another flower I'm going to weave it here and there. Let's see. I think that look actually I'll go ahead and put one more right there to kind of fill it a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, I've kind of filled it a little bit more with the greens. I'm going to go in with orange zest now. And I'm going to use the smallest solid flower from Flower Fusion number 7. And I'm going to just go back in again and just fill in some of the small openings that are left. And again, kind of paying attention to the ballots that I want to create. And with these particular ones, I'm kind of not being as careful about colors not overlapping. Uh, I think the orange looks nice when it overlaps with the greed. Just kind of 
fill in all the blank spots. And it, I mean, you don't have to get every single one with this go around because we're going to be adding some more color in a second. So there's my orange zest flowers. And now I'm going to go back in with Summer Sunrise, this little dot from Flower Fusion number seven. And this is small enough that I can really, you know, fill in any remaining empty spots. This is the last stamped uh, image I'm adding to this background, so I can really just fill in everywhere. And at the same time, being conscious of that balance that I talked about earlier. Okay, I think that looks good. Now for the last touch, I'm going to go in and I've got a black pen and I'm just going to make three little dots, little dot trio cluster in the center of the orange zest and the terracotta tile flowers. You, this probably isn't going to pick up all that well on the video, but in the photographs you'll be able to notice that this really helps to kind of set the flowers off and it just adds a, another little detail. The thing with doing backgrounds like this is that every little detail that you add, every layer, makes it look more and more in depth and more um, finished and professional looking. So now that I've got this background finished, I'm going to go back in and I've got the um, chamomile tea dye duo cube and I'm going to smudge this directly to the paper around the edge. I love doing this whenever I create patterns on vintage cream card socks. It kind of gives them just a little bit more of a vintage look. I do this. And there's the finished background. Okay, now I'm going to create the little sentiment block for this um, project. And I'm using Fillable Frames Editions 2, the second one. And I'm actually using the frame with uh, the Matte Stack 2. I'm sorry, Matte Stack 1. And I'm going to stamp this frame right in the middle. Like that. And then I've got a sentiment from the same set here in my heart. And I'm going to add that in black in the center. And I've got a little heart from Love Lives Here. And I'm adding that in orange zest. I actually had a wrong ink pad there. Orange zest. Add that off to the side just like that. I'm going to adhere this piece to a piece of terracotta tile cardstock cut with the layers matte stack one die. I'm going to set that to the side. I have a Summer Sunrise um, A2 card base that I created with the uh, crease at the center. So it folds this way. And I'm going to adhere the patterned paper that we created ourselves directly to the front. And I did edge the Summer Sunrise card base with um, the chamomile tea dye as well, just to give it, soften it a little bit. And now I'm going to take Orange Zest Satin Ribbon, just a long piece of this, and I'm going to tie this around. I'm actually using it upside down, the non-shiny side facing up, and I'm just going to tie this in a very simple knot. Okay. 
Okay, I like to try to get everything organized before I tie the knot, pull it tight, and make sure everything's facing the way that I would like it. Okay, so there's that. And I'm just going to trim these ends with pinking shears. I'm actually going to trim this just a little bit shorter. Okay, and now that I've got that, I'm just going to take some foam dimensionals here. And I'm going to adhere the sentiment block that I created earlier. A little bit of dimension over the ribbon. It's just a nice touch with the sentiment block. I'm actually going to move this ribbon over just a tad. And that's why I like tying the ribbon directly around the card, like card base like this, is it gives me a little bit of freedom to move it if I'd like. I'm actually going to slide this down a little bit too. So I've got that, and I'm going to take this. And I'm going to adhere that right on top, like that. There you have a few little tips on how to create your own custom backgrounds. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you've learned a few things that you hope to implement in your own projects. And thank you for joining us today.